Hello, welcome to the Boeing tutorial. Today we're going to look at a few things to do with this thing right here and to do with this thing right here. Um, a lot of traditional music depends on the flow of the wrist and the flow of the bow uh, to help the flow of the tune. So it's all about the flow. Um, everybody's got their own way of, of teaching this um, or talking people through it. Um, I'm going to give you mine. I know Kevin touched on it as well. And uh, it's very important because once you go to bring uh, some of the tunes you've learned up to speed, um, things can get tricky on the right hand. Um, so hopefully this will help. Um, to hold the bow, again there's a few different methods. Some people like to hold it like the Suzuki method with the thumb underneath here and uh, your fingers on the top. Or sometimes I hold it depending on what I'm doing. Um, I like to hold it like that. So it's my thumb in the little groove here and my, f my finger, my second finger on the other side and the rest of the fingers on top like that and the odd time I might use my fourth finger just as a, a lever here to if, if I'm doing things like the chop um, one thing about the, your, your fourth finger um, once you put your fourth finger down on the bow and put any pressure on it it locks up all the joints here right up as far as your elbow so it makes it practically impossible to get a loose wrist okay so taking your, your fourth finger off the bow like that you'll notice that it's a lot more freer than when I have my, my uh, fourth finger on the stick like that okay so you might want to just try that if you find that you can't get a loose wrist and you're watching other people play like that and you're playing like this it might be that might be the cause of the problem um, other people also hold it up here on the just where the grip is um, that's apparently what it's for so why not use it there's, there's, it's not a wrong uh, method of holding the bow um, and also it'll help you get a loose wrist because um, your fourth finger is not going to be pretty much on there because there's not as much weight here than there is here. Um, the, the bow is pretty much unbalanced, um, it's not evenly balanced. The midpoint of the bow is around here somewhere. Um, there we go, it's about there, okay. Once you pass that point in the bow, um, things start to get easier up here, but you're going to sacrifice tone. Once you get past this point here, um, things get heavy because of the frog and the, the weight of the bow here, and also the weight of your hand. Um, so if you try to do a triplet, past the, the balance point of the bow on this side it's going to be really difficult and it's also uh, you're going to have to adjust the pressure and the speed you pull the bow across the strings uh, to have a, a clear tone down here once you pass this point um, from about here to here is the pretty much the the best point of the bow to play with it's going to give you an equal tone and balance um, and then once you can pass here that's the lightest part of the bow so things like triplets are going to be really easy to do here um, but it's also the lightest part so you're going to sacrifice a wee bit of tone unless you adjust it with the brunt of pressure you're putting down. So I'll just demonstrate that for you. If I draw the bow across the string, um, starting here, and I'll go work my way up the string, and work my way back down again, um, you'll notice if I hold it just, if I let, just let the bow rest without putting any pressure on it, you'll notice the tone changing. So uh, once I get past the balance point, you'll hear it getting better, and then once I get past sort of this point, you'll hear it get weaker, okay? So let, let's show you this then. Back down again. Okay, so there you can see the sort of divided into three parts. Um, we have the, the sort of scratchy part here, okay, where the bow, the weight of the bow isn't um, is sort of impeding our, our tone. And then we've got here where it sort of gets a wee bit better, and then we've got here where it gets a wee bit weaker. So you might want to think about that. It's all about adjusting the the pressure on your right hand that you're pressing down on the bow. Um, if you're holding the bow like that, your first finger is, is you can see the bow moving, um, your first finger is the one that's going to apply the pressure, okay? Your second finger is the one that really holds it, your third finger sort of stops it from rocking, ba rocking back and forth, and your fourth finger can be used to anchor it like that. If you get past that point in the bow, I would say use your fourth finger, just to sort of balance the bow out a bit more, okay? Um, to achieve a loose wrist, again I was saying about their, your fourth finger, okay? You want to try to keep that off. Um, there's different methods of practicing this. Again, like I said in some of the other tutorials, the scales are uh, your, your best friend for practicing anything, I think, um, especially your hand-eye coordination and your coordination between this hand and this hand. Um, so if we take a scale, some people like to take a scale and the amount of syllables in your name. Uh, some people like to play the amount of syllables in your name. Um, so if I take Niall Murphy, there's four syllables, so it's going to be... Okay, just a scale of D. And again, we're going to play the amount of syllables, so there's four syllables, so we play four notes. And uh, I want to try to avoid 
uh, moving my whole arm, okay? We want to try to... From our wrist, or from the knuckles of our, our fingers. Um, so let's try that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back down again. Okay. That exercise is just to to loosen up this part of your hand, okay? If you feel that you can't do that, just try to change in some things, like it might be your fourth finger, it might be the amount of grip that you're actually holding the bow with. Uh, again, you want to try to relax your whole hand. If you're gripping the bow extremely tight, like that, uh, all the muscles in your hand are going to lock up and it's going to cause tension and tension does not allow for a loose wrist. Um, another thing on bowing, um, you might notice some people bow with their, from their shoulder, okay? I don't think this is a good idea, simply because if I show you what, what happens when I bow from my shoulder, I'll exaggerate it slightly just so you can see. So I'm bowing from my shoulder, okay, the path of the bow, right, is sort of going in a semicircle. Um, which doesn't give a good tone as you can hear. Okay, it's sort of traveling round. You want to try to keep the bow traveling uh, parallel with the bridge. Um, so for that, you want to bow from your elbow only, okay? Um, so you can see from the camera shot there that the bow is pretty much running parallel with the bridge, okay? That's what happens when I bow from my elbow. So to practice that, you can sit against a chair like that Rest your, your um, arm against the back of the chair so it's not moving backwards and um, draw the bow sort of like that. Once you reach a point about there when you can't really go any further, then you can bring your elbow forward and your bow, bow from your shoulder, but keep your bow running parallel, okay? Um, that'll just in, um, involve just slightly rotating the bow or your wrist um, slightly forward uh, so that your bow, your bow travels straight. And back down again. Okay, to practice um, bowing past the midpoint of the bow, um, especially past the sort of first third of the bow. Uh, again, long scales, really long scales, and uh, you'll you'll finally uh, get get to 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 know what what pressure to put on the bow here and how much you need to balance it. Um, so if I take a scale of D again, uh, we start here at the heel of the bow. You want a smooth sound. So three, four. <coughs> Okay, so once you hear a sort of a, a gritty sound, it means you're either not pulling the bow fast enough or else you're uh, putting too much pressure on it. So um, it depends on the bow as well. Some bows are balanced differently. So um, it's gonna change slightly for everybody. Uh, so have a go at playing around with, with a few scales. Um, also maybe play your name. Uh, it's a fun exercise. And uh, play along with the metronome again. Uh, stressing the, the metronome thing. If you want to take a scale, speed it up slightly. Practice the ornamentation, especially the triplets. Uh, that's where your, your bow in hand uh, comes into its own, hopefully. Um, have a look at the ornamentation tutorials and we'll see you in a lesson very soon.